Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for the World Wood Day Foundation for giving us an opportunity to present our research. Actually, this research is done by me and Professor Wang uh, uh, on, on our study of the typo typology of the timber pagoda in East Asia. The beginning of this research starts from our uh, observation of the uh, Chinese tradition, uh, the Eastern Asian tradition with the Nepalese uh, architecture, where we, it is widely known that the Chinese architecture, and especially for its tall buildings, which we call pagoda, as we see in the left left hand side picture, is um, um, famous for its self contained and unique architecture styles and appearance. But um, um, far away for thousands of miles away, we can see that it's quite similar to the Nepalese uh, tiered pagoda. So this is a the research starting point of our research and try to understand why there will be similarities of um, in the in the ty architecture types. Um, so we, we started our research first to begin with um, uh, our the, the Eastern Asian part, which we our res um, our research focuses, and after that we think it is a very good start for us to moving back to the Nepalese um, part, uh, which we were building up a transnational um, and uh, understanding of this architectural practice in the whole Asia circles. And there will be, we can see there will be two kinds of um, architecture, quite similar um, tall buildings in Nepal and East Asia. Um, East Asia. Yeah. And um, the pagoda itself is, um, uh, is a typical Buddhist architecture transplanted from India to uh, China uh, hundreds of years before. And um, it was absorbed into the Chinese um, local practice of architecture to build these kind of high-rise buildings. We can see from the 8th century um, mural paintings from the northern China that the temple at that time is faithfully depicted with uh, many kinds of mount, um, tall buildings surrounding these temples, around, uh, 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 which uh, dominant the landscape of Buddhist architecture at that time. So um, we have roughly divided this kind of um, tall buildings into four types. Um, they are multi-storied pagoda, multi-eaved pagoda, multi-storied hall pavilion, and multi-eaved hall pavilions. Actually, there will be two major uh, categories, and, um, and each of them have two major subtypes. The first one is the most um, prominent one, is a, we call it pagoda, in Chinese called Tao. Uh, this kind of architecture is featured in its plan in a square, hexagon, or oct octagon plan, and with multi-storied uh, outlook. Um, the first type we call the multi-storied pagoda, um, actually, this kind of architecture practice, which uh, overlapping the uh, individual buildings uh, into s uh, several tiers, has been um, um, exist before long before the introduction of Buddhism. We can see from the second century second century uh, um, terracotta models um, in Han Dynasty. There's all, uh, already have this kind of architecture. And in the uh, earliest examples um, from archaeological findings that the um, pagoda at that, that time is in a square layout and with tiers of uh, uh, um, floors, which um, building up this high-rise profile. The earliest example we can find is the uh, Hoyuji pagoda, uh, now, nowadays in Nara, Japan, in the 7th century. This pagoda, we can see that uh, is planned in a square shape, and from the sectional drawings, it is um, consists of series of layers. Um, each layers have a single uh, s structural unit, use the columns and eaves, and this kind of uh, space is overlapped in tiers of tiers, and to building up uh, the five-story buildings. So, so in each buildings, in each stories, it have a full head, and in the central there will be a Central pillar not only symbol, have a symbolic meaning of uh, the representation of, of Buddha himself, but also have some structural function to balance the, the vibrance in the earthquake. Um, 
So this kind of um, architect um, pagoda is uh, the most typical one in Japan. And we can see in the other examples from the 8th century, the, the Yakushichi pagoda, quite similar square plan, and the tiers of um, uh, overlapping um, superimposed structural units, and in the century is a, is a, a central column. And also the 10th century example from the Daigoji pagoda, and also the 12th century. So the Japanese pagoda is looking in a quite similar ways with the multi-storied um, uh, construction. But in the Chinese ones, in the later period, the earliest one we can find is in the 11th century. We can see it's uh, slightly different from the Japanese ones. It's still built in the timber structure, but from a, sec from a section we can see that um, it removes uh, the central pillar, and in the, in the, in the central part, it used, uh, the, the space is used for uh, accommodate the Buddha, big giant Buddha statues. Therefore, um, the, uh, it also uses the several layers of a special unit uh, to building up uh, the, uh, the main body of the stupa. From the plan, we can see it, it uses octagonal um, layout. The ground, the ground level uses both the masonry works as well as the timber structure to reinforce the ground. And in the upper part, it uses the purely timber structure. And that is the start point that deviating from Chinese practice and Japanese practice. And we can see in the later um, examples in China, the most of the pagodas uses these masonry ground uh, uh, um, podiums also as used as an enclosure for the pagodas. Um, but the central part is, um, if there will be no images at all, still uses the central columns to support such as these 11th century examples, we use the central pillar to support and the eaves uh, uh, surrounded the, the main body. And also in this one, it's a um, five-story pagoda, and in the, in the interior space, uses the, uh, the timber structure, and in the exterior one, we use the masonry work to enclosure, and also the um, 11th century ones. So in general, the the, the Japanese follows a very um, strict uh, or consistent manners to building up their pagodas in a multi-layered, uh, multi-storied um, fashion and with uh, the square, mo most of them are square uh, layout. The Chinese ones use, um, use uh, uh, not only the square layout, but also the octagonal and hexagonal. And, and the, the difference is that the Chinese ones use this Sometimes, normally they use the masonry works together with a timber pagoda. And in addition to this kind of multi-story pagoda, we also have the multi-eaved pagoda. Uh, the, we can see in the, the mural painting I just showed before, the, the, in the central part of the, uh, of the pavilions, there will, uh, of the temple, there will be a multi-eaved multi pagoda. The pagoda is have all these single story, but it have multi-eaved surrounded. We can see from, although we have very rare examples, we still can find some of them. The first one we can see is uh, a seventh century from the Korean. We can see this, pagoda, this pag multi if the pagoda uses the central columns, individual columns, to directly support the uppermost uh, roofs. The, uh, the, the, the lower roofs actually um, um, are framing in a setback ways. And, and to simulating the, the, the profile of the multi-story one. But in actual, we can see from interior space, it is single storied And also another rare, um, um, not uncommon example is a circular um, layout of the, heaven, um, the altar to heaven in Beijing. Uh, and this um, hall, or also we can call it the multi, uh, if the pagoda uses this central pillar to support the roof and with the setbacks of which creating a pyramidal um, um, profile of the, uh, of the outlook. Um, in addition to the, uh, the Chinese proper, the, in the southeast of China, the, the ethnic minorities uses this multi-tiered uh, architectural style to building, building up their sacred architecture, such as uh, these uh, um, numerous drum towers found in the southeast of Guizhou. And this is uh, one of the dr famous drum towers built in the 7th century. It has a hexagonal uh, layout and uses 
the four cent um, um, central pillars to support columns to support the uppermost roof and with the densely piled lower roofs surrounded the, the main body of the um, pagoda. And with, also we can see other examples from the southeast China. And this is uh, the Da Zai drum tower and the uh, Hualien drum tower and another one. An, an, uh, next example is, is called multi-storied hall or pavilion. And this one has a different origination be, be, um, uh, be, um, different from the um, pagoda, which is direct, developed directly from the hall, which is the secular buildings. We can see from the 8th century examples. And the, uh, the pavilions have, uh, uh, are mostly used, not only used in the region's architecture, but also used in the imperial palace. And we can see from the uh, 11th century um, paintings, there will be a lot of um, these kind of multi-story hall pavilions used in um, uh, imperial uh, architecture. And the earliest example you can see is uh, the main hall of Hoyuji, uh, Hoyuji, 7th century. It looks, it have a square, a rectangular layout, and the section, although it, only a single, the first story is used, but actually it has used the two tiers um, levels of columns to support the roof. So it, it tries to um, building up this architecture in a, in a two storied ways. And the most typical one is the 9th century Guanyin pavilions from the North China. It have a similar um, a square plan and with two storied uh, elevation. But we can see from its uh, a sectional drawings, between the two, um, two uh, functional uh, layers, there will be a uh, transitional layer between. So in this way, we can achieve a large space in the, in the upper floor. And this one is to accommodate these large statues. And we can see the, uh, the, 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 di the, the uh, clear diagram of how these architect structures are composed. And we can see other examples uh, in China, North China. And also in South China, we have uh, the, this kind of um, multi-storied multi um, hall pavilions. And this, this example is a, uni uh, a slightly different. Without the, the transitional layers, we, we have the, the just directly support the roofs with the single columns, which um, um, without the transitional layers. And also uh, other later examples. So because of the difference of the two types of um, pavilions used, uh, one is used to the uh, multi-storied columns, another one is directly support upper story with the columns below. So we, have, we can achieve different appearance. One, we can have large space in the, front, in the upper level, another one can have a, a setbacks um, in the upper levels. So this is basically about the um, um, multi-storied pavilions. The last tape, type we call is multi-eaved hall or pavilion. And this one, and similar to the multi-eaved um, pagoda, is developed from a single building. But it, it, it is also it is used um, both in religious and secular buildings. In order to monumentalize the buildings, uh, we, we elevated our single horse higher and used the, another eave skirting the lower, lower level. So the, um, the earliest example we can find is uh, the Phoenix Hall in the 11th century in Kyoto. We can see the, the main body of the buildings is elevated and we can have another layers of uh, roofs under it. So it looks like a two story, but in, this, in the um, sectional drawing, we can see that it's only one story high. And also the um, 11th Chinese examples from the North China, the, the, the Shenmu Hall. And it has a lower level, um, lower um, eaves to surround, to creating the corridors surrounding the main body. But in the, in the interior space, actually, it's only one single story. The most monumental, like, monumental examples is coming from the, uh, the, the Todaiji, the Grand Hall of Todaiji. We can see in order to accommodate the giant Buddha inside, the building must to be elevated remarkably high. So that uh, in order to make an embarrassing outlook, it has to be have a lower uh, uh, eaves under it. So it looks like a multi-story, but we can see in the interior space, it used just to uh, one story for the Buddha. And also, uh, the, the most um, biggest one in China is uh, the Taihe Hall from the Imperial Palace. And it's two, a double-eaved but single story. These are sectional drawings. 
So uh, we can see the last type, it is single story, but with multi eft uh, It's developed from the, the secular buildings of hall, the, sing, the single story hall, but used to uh, have an outlook of the, the multi-story buildings. This, this transformation, typological differences, actually uh, in the very beginning of the architectural history, we can see the, uh, the historian already um, lining, uh, um, describing the evolution of this transformation of the Buddhist pagoda, but our research alterna uh, alternatively uses the, the typological research, which um, which helping us to understanding in another way about the, ch the, the building tradition of the Chinese Eastern Asian architecture, and we can see uh, these four types of architecture: is multi-storied one with multi um, real multi-storied um, spaces and a square plan and a multi eaved pagoda with single story but a square or the um, uh, octagonal um, layout and the two types of the um, um, multi-story hall and multi eaved pavilions. So with this knowledge, uh, we can see that we can have a comprehensive understanding of the, the Eastern Asian uh, high tall building tradition, and we can consider this kind. What ha what is the relationship between the Nepal architecture with the China with the Eastern Asian tradition? Because the, the Chinese one is always understood as a very unique and self-contained. So why there would be such a similarity between the China and the uh, the Eastern Asian with uh, Nepal? Uh, uh, architecture, so that is uh, um, open for the discussion, uh, and especially for our uh, our recent practice in to building up this um, two-tiered hall in the Changgu Nanaya temples, uh, that will giving us a more um, opportunity to understand the the um, uh, structural principles of the Nepal ones, and will further further up our our research in the uh, the, the transnational. Uh, research. Yeah, thank you.